Hi, happy Hanukkah, everybody. Hello. Welcome to our Hanukkah Love today. Um, we had lots of choices and trying to think where we should start. Actually, just last week, everybody was getting ready for Hanukkah and looking up recipes. And now there are so many recipes out there, but I decided I'm going to stick to the traditional ones because everybody's favorites are all their memories from way back when and what they're used to at home. So I know there's lots of exciting new tricks, keto lockers, vegetable lockers. Um, what, um, what are they called? What's Eric? Gluten-free. Gluten-free and all these fancy things, but we're gonna stick to the basics. Um, I was actually speaking to my sister and I was saying to her that I remember who was talking about my grandmother's locks. I was too young to remember how delicious they actually were, but their memories, every time they speak about the Gaba and talk about my yummy locks and her warm embrace, and I don't know what was yummy was her hug or her locks, but I'm sure it was this both. I do remember the hug though. And I decided, and I asked my sister, you know, we don't have the exact recipe, but I was like discussing with her what was so yummy about it. And she's like, you might not want to hear this, but I think it's the hand work, hand grated yummy muffins. So I thought about that, and then I'm like, one minute, but my father loves blended muffins. So was it grated or was it blended? And she said, actually, she made both. So I had my work cut out for me because I had to make sure I got it all right before I came out here and was telling me what to do. So last week I made some blended, some grated, some processed, and Dubba is here to tell us which one was the competition. The hand grated one. <laughs> so Dubba is very nice to be my assistant and she agreed that hand grated actually takes a bit of tell us why Dubba. Oh, well. <laughs> because it's thicker, like it gets more texture. Um, we like using the thicker side of the grater so it's not mushy, but if you prefer mushy or lobsters, more like pancakes-ish, then you could use the more thick, like the finer side. Um, so we're going to go through while Deva's um, helping us grate the lockers. Actually, this year, with our COVID smaller crowd, hand grating is a little bit easier. So we don't have to do that many, unfortunately. But I guess that is the positive side to everything. I'm going to show you my choices of lockers here. So we have, on my right, blended. In the middle are the, Sophia, what does it say? Is the Grated by food processor. Process. And... On the left of that is the hand grade. Now I have to tell you also different options now are Yukon Go, Rustin, Idaho, everybody has the best idea and the best flavor. So I experimented the blended with the Yukon Go. So I definitely can tell you that the Yukon Go have a fluffier texture and they don't turn brown. So that's a positive thing. And coming straight out of the pan, I never knew that I liked blended, but they're absolutely delicious. Then I did the processed ones that, again, are very yummy, but I absolutely have to say that hand grated definitely beats everything. So blended by hand on the thing, or actually you could cheat and blend in the blender. And grated by hand, uh, we did a blind test when so the kids came home and everybody chose the hand agreed. But I do have to say, I did them back like my mother did with rusted potatoes, and they did, they taste absolutely delicious, and it works. The only thing is, like I said, they might turn brown, or if you want to rinse them, break them into a bowl of freezing ice water, and then rinse them really well, and again, squeeze them out. Other tips that I've seen is people break their potato and squeeze it out in a towel. That's just one more step and one more mess. Making lactis is quite the mess on its own. So I find that just squeezing it out in a regular colander does the trick too. For many years, I never even did that step. And all the kids want lactis every night anyway. So I try to explain to my kids, it's not like pizza, but you have to eat pizza for eight days. You can have a donut, you can have a lactis the next night, but somehow my children think that every night of Hanukkah, it's a mitzvah to have latkes. 
And actually, Menasha, my Tanaka man, as you called him, is living in New York this year. And I was a little bit concerned that he's not going to have lockers. And lo and behold, he texted me, Mom, what's the lock for recipe? And I said, hey, I was waiting for this text. And he actually outdid us all. Picture perfect. I almost smelled them through the camera. So I guess my, I don't think I gave him all the tricks of straining and draining and squishing out the water and he was rusted in that Yukon gold and he got it right. So I think we can all try whatever potato we would like and it'll work beautifully. One more thing on our recipe, which is actually posted on the MPC website, if you didn't receive it yet, it says one large onion and five potatoes. I actually used a quarter of the large onion and I find it's flavorful enough. Also, a trick being that we're hand grating, you can blend your onion because it comes out much finer and it's much easier on your eyes and much easier on everybody else in the room. So just a big chunk of onion or a medium small onion is plenty for our uh, potatoes. Now, that was doing a great job doing the hard work. And another old fashioned tip, somehow when you mix everything together by hand, it tastes absolutely better. I'm just going to go strain the potato in a colander. Thank you, Doug. Now, on the bottom um, right here, we have zucchini latkes. They are also, I don't know if you see them in the camera, I'll show them to you. So you just substitute your five potatoes for five zucchini. I have larger ones, so I get four zucchinis. And it's definitely a delicious delicacy. I don't think it substitutes a potato lot. There's something about the Hanukkah, traditional, crispy on the outside, yummy mushy on the inside, potato latka. I know you can't just have one. While Deva is straining the potatoes, I'm going to start with checking the eggs. So we're going to take three eggs. And another lovely trick I learned actually from my mother is you crack an egg by right? you know, knocking it on another egg, and that's really the best way to crack them. <laughs> Add my pepper, salt, they're all pre measured, and don't, I find that when you put less salt and when they're ready, just sprinkle some salt on top, and it's much better than over-salted, over the recipe. Now, this is pre-measured one-third cup flour. If you prefer to put a little bit less, that works too. Have a look good? Well, I think so. Okay, we're ready. <laughs> So you see we have a few different colors because like I said, we use the rest of potatoes that do um, turn brown, but it doesn't have any, doesn't change the taste at all. I'm going to incorporate all the ingredients and I'm going to ask Sidia to come and help us skillfully fry the lockets. She was actually being very nice to me because my hair doesn't get washed so easily and frying you know what that does to your hair. Hi everyone, happy Hanukkah. Yeah, just gonna wait for my mother to get ready. And then, ready? I'm ready. Okay, so here I have some, I'm just gonna move it so you guys can see closer. Here I have this oil that I got very hot. So there's a few ways to check if your oil's hot. I don't have a here, but you can take the back of a wooden spoon, put it in, and you bubble that form around it, you know your oil hot. But I'm going to take the carrot, which is going to help with the color of the oil. Because sometimes when you fry an oil, the oil decolors, it becomes piecey, we don't want that. So the carrot actually going to absorb all the bad stuff and keep our oil clear. If my, oil, my carrot sizzles when I put in the oil, we know it's going to be good. So let's shut it down. Ah, it's sizzling. 
So here I have a fork and a spoon, nothing too fancy. I'm going to take about a tablespoon of filling and drop it in my pan. You can press it down a touch. I like a lot of it a little thicker, so I'm not going to press it too much. I'm going to put about four or five in the pan and just see how it looks. You don't want to overcrowd your pan um, because that causes the oil temperature to drop. When the oil temperature drops, your lockets start absorbing the oil, which we don't want, and they become soggy. So to keep them crispy, keep your oil hot and just drop them in. So I get four in my pan, all comfortable. I don't know if you can see, and my carrot here is already starting to cook and it's absorbing all the not good stuff in our oil. I don't know if you see, but I have a burner back here, and in it, I on it, I have a pot with some vinegar and cinnamon sticks. So, what is that doing? Well, I put that in. It's taking away all of that smell because I don't know about how it's like in your house, but in our house, a lot of us do not appreciate the bad smell. I, I don't call it bad, it's a different smell. It's called like fried up but some people don't appreciate the smell. So we boil some vinegar and cinnamon to take it away and absorb it so that not only walk around smelling their clothes all day if they smell like lobster. But there's other tricks you could do. You could either embrace the smell, it's not like it smells yum, or you could turn on your fan, open your window. Some people ride on their back burners of their grills, but there's many tricks. You do what makes you happy, and the smell's not bad, it's just different. So we're gonna wait till these, they're already getting crispy. We're, the first side needs about five minutes. And then we flip it and we wait till the other side gets golden. The first side is really cooking out the potatoes. So I'm just gonna wait till they get cooked. About two more minutes, I think. And yeah, you see they're sizzling away. And it actually smells like cinnamon vodka in here, not like lots of things that are hot in the back. But we're just going to wait. I'll probably fill in like this because I'm this close, but no one else. Okay, let's check the other side. Just take a little peek to see how they're doing. Ah, they're getting golden, but you could also rotate them a little because usually the edges are hotter. I was a fan of hotter because if your burn is not so even, like we're not cooking on a regular stove top, so you could rotate them. It's not really important, but if you'd like to make the more even cooking, um, so we're just going to wait till our lockets sizzle up. And again, the frying is the same for if you do blended or hand grated or zucchini, it's all the same. Depending on the vegetable you use, like the potato you use, or the, like for the zucchini, the zucchini takes longer than the potato. You need to do more water. I'm not sure if you have to strain the zucchini on more because of all the excess water. Um, however, you just play it by ear. It's really not that complicated. Once you put it in the frying pan, you have to sit there, watch the long way, you don't want any fires, but you'll see, you'll feel it, you'll smell it, you'll see it. You'll know, don't worry. So just check. I think it needs like one more minute. It's getting there. And if you don't push down the potato, the lockets so hard, then they're gonna be like thicker inside. So when you bite it, it's not gonna be like I'm sure you have like uh, thickness. I don't know how to explain it. I know you got it. So let's just wait. The great, the blended ones come out more like pancake patties. They're more thinner, they're crispy, but different crispy because like the shredded has like little sticks that stick out that are like french fries sort of. But the, for some reason, I don't know why, when we did the blind taste test, but we could tell the difference between the hand grated and the food processor grated was that the food processor grated for some reason didn't have as many stick out of the lockia that make like that crispy extra crunch and the hand grated has those extra sticks out. So that was the difference that we saw in the blended and the and the hand grated. That was the main difference we saw. So if that doesn't bother you, that there's no extra crunch, then you could probably just go for the hand the food processor instead of the hand grater, which is easier, of course, because the machine does the work for you. So let's check people with their lockdown. So I don't know if you see, but they still need a minute on each side. So we're just gonna wait. I'm gonna hire the flame to keep the oil hot. 
You just see your oil getting too hot, you lower if you see it's cooling down, then let's go the higher. But we want to try to keep our oil consistent temperature throughout. That's what we did over throughout our pan in the beginning. So let's wait. You see the little like potato that seeped out, and it's gonna be the best part. It's gonna be like, crispy at the end. You can't tell if you really like it. So I'm gonna wait exactly one more minute. See, it's taking a little longer. So it depends on your burner, it depends on your pan, it depends on your thickness of your latkes, it depends on what you put in. If you want to be very professional, you can see the exact tablespoon and fill it up. But we like to do home kitchen style here and just play around and have fun. All my latkes are gonna be different shapes and that's okay. The carrot, you might have to change the carrot in the middle because because our oil is so hot, the carrot does cook up. But you could play by ear. I think I'm going to need to change my carrot in one more batch. So I'm going to flip my lockets. They are beautiful and golden. So now I think it's going to need like another minute, not much longer, because most of the cooking of the lockets happens already. Now we're just trying to get the second side crispy and even color on both sides. So we're just going to wait another minute. Um, some of the potato like separate from the latke, you could take a swatted thing and go in and take them out if you don't want them to burn, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna take out. See, I got two right on my paper towel. Because like you don't want them staying in any glass, but it really doesn't matter. It's fine, you can just leave it in if it doesn't bother you. Um, Another thing is that there's different options of how you take them out. Some people just put it straight on a cooling rack, and some people just put it on a plate. What we like to do is we put it on a paper towel on a plate, and that sort of drains out the excess oil, um, keeps it more crispy. And yeah, if you want to rewarm them, you could always, and if you're not being able, if you don't want to fry them right when you want to eat them, you could always. Put them in the oven to be warm and they'll still crisp up. So yeah, let's check in our second side. Ah, oh, they look beautiful. I'm gonna take them out. I'm using my same spotted spatula. It's gonna drain out all the extra oil and place it on my plate. This one needs a little longer. I'm gonna see that in for the last one to freak out. Freak it out. And that's how you fry your lobster. So my sister Hannah is gonna come. Ooh, I just lost one. My sister Hannah is gonna come and show us some yummy ways to enjoy our lobster, some traditional and more modern. So come on, Hannah. Hi, hi everyone. I'm Hannah. So I'm gonna show you how to make Quebecois style um, poutine lobster. Courtesy to our Miss Paterno, my sister, my sister and my brother for making up this recipe. Um, also, one of the miracles that happened on Hanukkah were that, um, were that there was a um, lady, a hoodis, who went to the king, Elifor, the general, Elifornet, and brought him some cheese and wine. And she said, first eat the cheese, and then she, and then he was thirsty, so she gave him the wine. Then he got drunk and fell asleep, so she cut off his head, put it in her little basket, and hung it on the on the wall of the city. And the, the Jews were saved, so and all like the whole army ran away. So that's another miracle is to eat dairy. Um, also, we use this company gravy Adar, but it says to use two cups of water for one packet. I like to add an extra half a cup, so that way it's not very like gloopy. So we're gonna start making our routine matcha poutine. I'm gonna take our nice, crispy, hot, and fresh latkes. I'm gonna put two. Because this is really good. Oh, 
Okay, so we're gonna put the cheese first on the locket so that way our gravy melts the cheese because it's not really melted, it's not good. And also you wanna make sure the gravy is nice and hot. So that way the cheese melts are so you're gonna have to microwave it and it's gonna be like soggy potato locket that you would just spend time making yourself smell for and if they're soggy it's not very fun. So we're gonna start with making some cheese. You put as much as you want. I don't like it super cheesy, I like it just spray. So I'm not gonna put too much. And then we're gonna scoop out some of our gravy. And you can just cook it for as long as you want until it's the thickest amount that you want. Like it's very nice and like hot, so it's gonna melt. Also, part of that miracle about you know this is that women shouldn't be working while the candles are still lit. So that's why you just don't work if you're a woman while the candles are lit. And also, this last recipe goes great with the book that more in the comments because a lot of kids and the kid made a lot of kids. So I'm just gonna wait a few seconds to so the cheese melts while we make our other style lockets. You can put we have some applesauce and sour cream. I'm gonna start by just scooping a little bit of applesauce on here. And we're gonna put some sour cream. Okay, our poutine looks insanely good. So we're gonna make a bracha on our thing, bara fata alayini nafala, very free hamazama. That is so good. Thank you to the my mother and Dava. The lockers are delicious. If you make this, send us a pic send a picture to Zelda at the MTC.com. <laughs> and happy Hanukkah, everyone. Bye, enjoy. Happy Hanukkah. Hanukkah. I think next time it should be the tribal girls and their mother. <laughs> <laughs> happy Hanukkah, everybody. Enjoy. Can't wait to celebrate together in person. Only good news. Stay safe, stay positive. Hudson Mayor, Hudson Mayor.